Hey folks, how you doing today? We're going to be doing, I got a little project going out here in my little, uh, my little shed, my shed shack. Yeah, this is going to be for the uh, uh, bush class. I haven't done a bush class video in ages. So uh, let's get back on track with that since I finally got my computer, a new computer. And I got videos going back up again. So I want to get this one done for bush class. This is hafting an axe. You shouldn't know how to hang an axe handle. It's not really difficult. This is going to be a little more involved than it really needs to be because I got this here. It's uh, 1.2 pounds. This is. Alright, um, that little rust spot. I had the soaking in uh, vinegar. Got all the rust off of it, but I didn't oil it because I'm going to be blackening it anyways. And that little bit of surface rust will come right off. Because I'm going to be blackening this with good old fashioned trap dye. That staghorn sumac. Nice sticky buds of it. And uh, these were picked, these weren't even picked in the fall. I picked these probably two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And uh, they get, they didn't, they're not in too bad a shape. I think they'll work. I have a lot more. Like, I, I got these three little buds here. But I have, I got a whole bag full of them. They don't go bad. But they're best if you pick them in the, in the fall. But with that being said, let's see what we got going on here. All right. I'm going to get this. This is just a pot of water. Let's get this out of the way first, right? Put our sumac in here. In fact, I'm going to throw a few more in here. Break them up a little bit. It's almost like making sumac tea, except for sumac tea, you don't even need to heat it. Yeah, you can make it like sun tea. This here has acids in it that naturally blacken and dye um, steel metals on them. Well, there you go. This goes over to the fire. And that's going to heat up on there. It's good to boil it. You don't have to boil it when you're... Uh, when you're doing this, just once it gets hot, it was warm water when I when I uh, drew it from the sink, so it's still warm. We'll let that get a little hotter. All right, and while it's doing its thing over there, uh, while it's over there doing uh, its thing, heating up that water, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna get that mushroom out of it. We got that cleaned off pretty good. You can still see part of the name. But it is what it is. I'm gonna run some sandpaper through here. The idea is I just want to get this smoothed out as nice as possible. And a nice smooth axe is going to slice the wood a lot better. And this being what it is, such a lightweight head, it was 1.2 pounds, that was with the mushroom still on it. So it probably weighs closer to a pound now. little ridge. You guys can see that. It's on both sides. I want to knock that down. It's not too 
bad. piece of wire yeah I don't know why this has the I don't know if someone drilled those holes in it I mean it's to secure it to the head but if you know how to hang an axe you shouldn't need that so I think those were maybe drilled in after the fact but for what it's worth a decent little hanger so I can be able to get it out of that pot of uh, sumac and loop that can sit in there for a while I'm not sure how long I'm gonna leave it in there I uh, I want to do some work to this handle I'll talk I'll talk about that in a minute Alright, here's a look at the handle. Genuine uh, hickory beaver tooth wedge and your, that step wedge, I think that's what they call that. Here, turn that so we can see. Alright, yeah. So, overall, I can say I'm not impressed with, uh, with beaver tooth on this one. Uh, it's not a bad handle by any means, but it's it's a little rough. The grain orientation is like 45 degrees. And I don't think this is linse this might be linseed. But it almost looks like uh, amber shellac that they put on it. It's probably linseed. Shellac's more expensive. But uh but yeah. Overall, I'm, I'm not impressed with it. It doesn't have a nice swell down here at the end of the handle. I've gotten, I've gotten several handles from Beaver Tooth, and they've always been excellent. So I don't want to knock them, you know, because they're uh, they're def they definitely sell good handles. I'm just not impressed with this one. I could have gotten something of this caliber. I could have gotten this at the uh, at my local hardware store. And I went and had to wait almost a month for it to come in. So, anyway. Alright, the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, strip, strip whatever this is off. Acetone should do the trick. If not, I think I got varnish removal too. I can smell them, man. Get out of here. <coughs> Anyways. So I just want to create a little bit more of a dip through here. And the same thing going this way. More of a dip through here. And I'm going to take some off of here. In this area right up through here. I don't want to take much off of this up here because when you're swinging your axe right here, your axe is right here. 
So when you swing in the, this is what's taking the brunt. That, and if you miss swing, you're hitting this oftentimes. So I'll try to leave this more or less alone. I might take some off of here. Actually, I'm definitely going to take some off of here. with the main sanding and shaping here so let's hit it with some mineral spirit so we can finish sand it so it's gonna look pretty nice not too many tool marks in it from where I use the rasp on it either bit in here but that's okay because the finish sand that's not all right well now I'm gonna start finish sanding this it really doesn't even need it I mean this is I would say good to go but I hit it with a uh, right I got some 320 grit that's, that's as far as I'm going to sand it is with that. Because I mean this is already pretty darn smooth. And throw a coat of linseed and beeswax over this. It's going to be pretty sharp I think. Um, you still see a few few marks as shown you earlier. But there's a better look at it now I think. So. <coughs> Alright well. Let's get to it. Now you can see those marks though. Tool marks. Because they're filled in with the really fine dust from that 320 grit. But like I said, I'm not worried about that. This tool is going to be used. And abused. So basically this is going to be my new my new hip axe, belt axe. It will be a hip axe though. This is going to be totally hip. <coughs> but yeah, this is going to be my new belt axe. Because my, the one that I was using forever, actually all summer, in all those videos, 
my daughter was using it. She was uh, she was making feather sticks with it, and she ended up misplacing it. She was making feather sticks in the house. We have a wood stove, but she was getting the wood stove going. She's like 14. And uh, lo and behold, I can't find it anywhere. So now, I was like, oh, whatever. Gives me an excuse to, to do another one. And I want to do this project anyways because this is a, a bush class project. Alright, that's not bad. It's blackened up pretty good. See that? I don't think it's going to get a whole lot darker than that. It'd be nice if the whole thing wouldn't see the edge of it. Right here. It'd be nice if I can get the whole thing that dark. But that's fine. It's going to get oiled. And then heated. You heat up the oil, that'll blacken it up too. Like seasoning a cast iron pan. Alright. Let's see what we got going on here. This thing's nice and cooled off. back up. Alright. Now the moment of truth. That's fine. <laughs> Still had some berries in there from the from the uh, sumac. Uh, let's hit this with 100 grit sandpaper. It does need kind of a lot taken off. So I probably could almost hit it with rasp, but I don't want to take too much off. You know what I mean? Actually, I'm going to use the rasp. Definitely getting better. That might actually work. Let's try it. Oh yeah, she's going on. See? I'm getting there. And it's peeling a little bit of the wood too. Oh, there we go. Hopefully she gets a good set. Alright. Get some uh, linseed oil. Lube everything up. down into all that. I'm going to actually pour very carefully into that hole. Alright. Now let's do the same with the wedge. Get that lubed up. And before I did this, what I should have done was size these two up. Now, normally what I do is I'd make a mark right here. 
you know, I would kind of size it up, be like, okay, I'm right here, and I gotta take that much off. I'd put a mark with a pencil, but I didn't get my pencil. I, uh, dear, 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 learn how to talk. Probably be able to do it this way. There. That'll do. I get it started. She's in there. It's not going to get any better than that. I'm trying to get a. I'm going to leave a eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch sticking out. But there you have it. Sand job. Uh, what do you think? Nice little chappy, chappy, chappy. Let's uh, linseed this thing up. I got a uh, whoa! I got a camera that's gonna fall. All right, this here's the stuff I use for uh, for gloves with uh, just extra linseed oil added to it. So if you got a pair of leather gloves, you can actually use that to smough it on. These gloves here are a little dirty, I don't know. Some of the crud off of them. Dusty and dirty. I use them with the wood stove. I use them shooting. These are short cuffed, like a motorcycle glove. But it'll do justice here. Just do this a good smoffing. metal basically coat this thing in a heavy layer of oil and wax I'm going to set it right on the wood stove And there you have it. <coughs> Excuse me. That's how I have to next. I'll go through, I'll sharpen this next. Um, I'm not going to film that. You guys know how to sharpen axes. And if you don't, there's a million videos on how to do it. Everyone has their own way. I have my way. I'm going to use that file. Then I'm going to hit it with a stone. And that'll probably be it. So, but yeah, there she is. I'll go probably set this next to my wood stove. Not the one in, in here, over there. Um, I got, you know, we heat with wood. That stove there, I'm going to let it go out. It's just for the shop. And uh, I'll just let this sit and bake next to the wood stove, and I'll hit it with linseed oil every day till, uh, well, until next week. So, so with that, you guys are still watching? Uh, hold on, there we go. Alright, so with that, my battery's about ready to die on my camera. I have a spare, but I don't feel like digging it out. So, that's how I have to next. If you guys are still watching to this point, um, go to Bush Cla Bushcraft USA. Go to the Bush Class session over there. And uh, there's all kinds of cool little projects and stuff. And you do it mostly for bragging rights. You can be like certified like... I forget what they all are now. But anyways, uh, yeah, go there and check that out. If you're, like I said, if you're still watching, God bless you. Um, you sat through probably longer than it should be to have to axe, but this one here, I wanted to custom it a little bit for me. 
because I needed a new belt axe. So there you have it. Like, share, subscribe. It's Adirondack American. I'm going to sign off, and you guys have a good one. Thanks. Bye.